Welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. I'm your host, Joey Tysick. Alongside me, Joe Johnson, and our special guest of the week, my brother, Jordan Tysick. Pleasure to be here. Jordan, welcome in. Uh, what is your fantasy football experience, as we like to ask all of our guests? How, long, how long have you been playing? How many leagues are you in now? What's up with you? Um, I've been playing fantasy football since I was probably in like the sixth grade wow. um, here and there, obviously not probably being the best player as a young kid. Um, but as of right now, I'm in four leagues, uh, two for high money and two for fun. Nice. Um, how do you feel your season is going this year in this league? Horrible. Absolutely horrible. <laughs> Uh, what would you say is equating to that issue? Uh, the big problem was the, me taking a lot of gamble with not taking quarterback and waiting for Aaron Rodgers and then him going down very first week of the season. Mm. Yeah, and then you've had a, a carousel of quarterbacks basically ever since that occurred. So I've been playing the waiver wire with them, and then I thought I could stick with Stafford for a little bit, but it's not looking. He might come back, but they just, uh, I don't know if anybody saw, they did sign Carson Wentz today, oh, wow. the Los Angeles Rams. So oh, wow. I don't know what that means for Stafford or, or what, but. Uh, yeah. I don't think his thumb injury was that serious. I saw the replay where he threw a pass and banged it on somebody's helmet, mm -hmm. and there was talk that it wasn't that serious. I thought he was going to play. Obviously, you thought he was going to play, and he didn't play, and yeah. that really surprised me, and I've been seeing headlines and articles saying is is this the end of Stafford as a Ram if if he yeah. doesn't finish this season due to injury uh, how do they bring him back next year yeah and I don't I, I think I don't remember exactly what they did if, if they said he tore his UCL uh which is that ligament that's like runs between your finger and your thumb which is awful for quarterbacks mm. um so it's kind of a wait and see um week nine was weird uh we are now halfway through the NFL regular season, which means we only have 10, 11, 12, 13, five weeks before the fantasy playoffs start. Mm. So you have five weeks to get your team right. And as we'll look towards the end of the episode, uh, the standings are crazy right now. But uh, this week was kind of uh, low scoring, not it too was. many uh, high scoring affairs throughout, even though there was some pretty good games around the league, I would say. Five teams failed to score 100 points this week in our league. Yeah, it was uh, it was not pretty for the most part, but uh, who it was pretty for is uh, yours truly once again. <laughs> uh, high score on the week, a battle for the outright lead in the league. Uh, I took on Tracy's team, and Ooh, I won one twenty nine point eight two to one seventeen point nine four. Uh, the only thing that made me nervous about uh, this matchup going into it was, of course, not having Christian McCaffrey. Uh, he's been just a workhorse the entire season. And with Stafford being out, I was a little bit nervous about Cup, which is why I sat Puka Nakua. Um, and then I was down by one going into Monday night, and Garrett Wilson just needed one catch. And for a while, he only had one catch for 10 yards plus a fumble. So I was losing for like the first half of the game or something like that. Um, so I was nervous of getting into one of those weird, odd scenarios where I was going to lose. Um with one guy playing his full complement of minutes. Um, Tracy, of course, Devontae Adams has just been struggling for the the Raiders. I don't – they switched their quarterback. They switched their coach. Uh, and they switched some positional coaches, I believe, as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, – She's had it. She's yeah. She's had it with Devontae Adams. She's ready to cut ties. Yeah, which I tried to trade for, but uh, she didn't want that. So <laughs> A lot of Raiders fans she's, in she, Ford Field on Monday night were – Saying the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I'd I'd be nervous. Um, but she did have some bye week players going as well. Like she had the Lions, Goff and Laporta were on bye, Brandon Ayuk were on bye. Um, so she kind of had to piece things together. She got twenty three points from the Cleveland defense. Uh they just ran over Arizona and Clayton Toon, which I think Arizona's happy to be getting Kyler Murray back possibly this week. Um, maybe next week if if possible. Um, I didn't really leave uh, too many things out of check except for the Houston players because C.J. Stroud went off. 
I had Tank Dell and Dalton Schultz on my bench, both putting Ooh. up over 25 points. But I can't be mad because I wasn't thinking about playing them. They've been kind of boom bust. Um, I, I think, do. I think Texas. Anyone who owns Texas Texans players right now have to think about getting them in the starting lineup. It seems like the Texans are on fire right now. You know, now. I'll tell you a secret right now because I have Devon Achan, Achan coming back uh, after the buy. After the buy. And I have Kyler Murray, who just came off IR. Tank Dell might be dropped by me. Which just is, flat out dropped? I What else am I going to do with him? Wow. Who am I going to replace? Cooper Cup? Garrett Wilson? Adam Thielen? Maybe Adam Thielen. You have an embarrassment Puka Nakua, of riches. Calvin Ridley? Maybe Calvin Ridley? Maybe Jahan Dotson? Mm. But Ridley, Dotson, and Dell are all kind of right around the same level of player for me personally. Um, so, yeah, Tank Dell might hit our waiver wire. It's shocking to see you bench Nakua, and you have to be considering benching Cup, and that's shocking yeah. to me because, yeah. you know, Nakua has just had the stellar season, and then they thought he might be affected with the return of Cup, but they seem to complement each other. But mm -hmm. uh, the past couple of weeks, Cup has had single-digit performances, and yeah. the Rams are going right down the uh, tubes. Yeah, and it was before the, the Stafford injury even that yeah. Cup was struggling, so... Maybe Carson Wentz will be the fire starter for that team. Anything. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm looking pretty good so far, um, and uh, we'll look to next week's matchup. But the second-highest scoring winner of the week was Marie, and this was the controversial matchup why Jordan was brought in today. <laughs> uh, Jordan only putting up 72.4, and as he spoke of, he had Matthew Stafford in his lineup, also had Riley Patterson, who was on by. Um Jordan, just, just explain yourself just so everybody knows. We've already talked about it. But. So the Matt Stafford reason, I did believe he was playing. I didn't. That was me s sleeping. Um, <laughs> you got four. Keep in mind, you do have four leagues to, to keep track of. I know for me, because I have three leagues that I keep track of, a lot of the times I set my lineup so early in advance, if any injury news comes out and I miss it, uh, I can also be in trouble. So, So my argument, though, was, I had a good feeling I was going to get blown out regardless of who was going to play. My argument would have been if I would have known Matt Stafford would have sat, I would have probably taken a really dumb risk and went with the Cardinals quarterback of Toon who got negative 0. 0.5 points. <laughs> so um, you actually gained some ground. Yeah, so maybe it was a maybe a smart decision. The kicker, I didn't want to drop Riley Patterson. Yeah. That's and I, under just I can understand me that being sometimes. Me being keep a lion. Yeah. Um, Plus, like we pointed out off air, uh, you would have had to have the perfect combination of players to pick up to be able to win this matchup because Marie put up a good amount of points. Which I didn't know Young Ho Ku was also sitting in our waivers. Yeah, oh, wow. it, that's we, the hard part. That is very game. surprising. That's, I would have never even guessed that he would have been in there to look. I so. didn't need, I didn't know either. When uh, I was told that, that was he was an available kicker, I thought that was crazy. But if you look at the kickers on our waiver wire, Brandon Aubrey There's, is out there, the Dallas kicker who's been incredible. I believe, did I see that Matt Gay was there as well I think for the so. Colts kicker? He's yeah. top 10. And th points. that's the thing that I say every week about 10-team leagues is like, there are going to be guys out there that yeah. you would think, how can they not be played? But, you know, there's only 10 kickers that you can play. So this week, to yesterday and today, I've been playing around on the waiver wire. Uh, so I'm going to try to see if I can get Sam Howell, just because he's been putting up pretty good points. for. Mm -hmm. I know the commanders are trying to tank, but yeah. he seems to still be doing his thing. Yeah. Um, I'm also looking to try to get uh, Taysom Hill, because in our league he is allowed to play a tight end. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try to sneak him in there as I'm – been waiver wiring tight ends every other week as well. He's so hit yeah. and miss. I mean, he ha he has a big game followed by several games where he does nothing, and he just happened to have a big game yeah. this past week. I think this is his biggest streak of games in a row where he's had plus ten points. His last, I believe, it's three, yeah, or three, which doesn't happen too often. Um, in the matchup, Ken Walker like was abysmal against Baltimore. Baltimore, one of the best defenses. Jalen Waddle got banged up in the game. Uh, no, he's out kind of in week. and out yeah um and then for marie like i said she had a amari cooper had his best day of the season of derrick henry did what he does travis kelsey did not and Kamara also struggled tyler lockett and dk metcalf struggled so this was a, a weird matchup just in general and then justin tucker you know 
He put up 14. He did his thing. Cooper's been uh, remarkably consistent. Uh, he, I've been playing him in, uh, you know, weekly uh, DK leagues, DraftKing leagues, mm -hmm. and he's he's good for points week after week. He's been having a nice season over there with the Browns. Yeah, only a, only a couple duds here and there, but, uh, I mean, he's like the only receiver that they really have, so. Yeah. But, so Jordan going into – Ninth place now, so you're on that cutoff line. Uh oh, we're in panic mode. So you're gonna have to really wheel and deal coming up here. Uh, next matchup is the closest matchup probably of the year, I believe. Is because isn't this less than you, Joe? Than when you're I, mine was like point two two, I think. Unless okay. I'm getting my other league mixed up, but yeah, I've I've lost right around my under same. a point. So Ian. Uh, one one thirteen point six four to Sammy's one thirteen point three eight, and this came down to Monday night. Uh, Sammy had Keenan Allen going, and Ian had Justin Herbert, who didn't have a very good game. They didn't move the ball all that well, but Austin Eckler found his way into the end zone twice, which was big for Ian. Uh, Aaron Jones came back and got a ton of touches, got a touchdown, seventy three yards, and a couple of catches. Dalton Kincaid, who's been great, filling in for Dawson Knox on Buffalo. And then, um, yeah. Oh, the Las Vegas defense playing against the lowly Giants. Yeah, I did a, uh, in my other league, I did a stream around them. They were sitting on the waiver wire, and I, I'm like, who's playing the Giants this week? Yeah. Picked them up. You could almost guarantee you're going to get points from just about any defense facing the Giants. They've been just awful. Yeah, I, I don't think they're going to continue with Tommy DeVito as far as I've heard. Um, they they might be bringing Matt Barkley. Danny DeVito. <laughs> they might be bringing Matt Barkley back. So, um, And then Sammy, the usual Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown are Incredible this year. Uh, Michael Pittman and Saquon Barkley had solid outings, um, but no touchdowns. That was kind of Sammy's uh, Achilles heel basically this week is he just he didn't get any touchdowns. He got the one from A.J. Brown mm. and the uh, the rushing touchdown from Jalen Hurts, but everybody else kind of just did their thing. And and, and not only are the, the Rams receivers struggling, but the running game is almost non-existent. Look at yeah. Henderson, who is sharing snaps with, Royce Freeman and neither one of them did anything. Cam uh or no Akers is gone now, but yeah, yeah those uh who's who's uh who's supposed to be coming back for the Kyron game? Williams. Williams. So he's still on IR, right? So yeah, I believe so. They're just not producing any offensive points at all over Yeah. It. They just they look awful right now. <laughs> yeah. Losing to the Packers is pretty pretty rough Ugh. in general. So crazy close matchup. Uh those guys are now tied for fourth at five and four. Um, the next, oh, we get to the lowly matchups. Well, before we move on, uh, did we look at their bench? I'm curious if anyone on the bench would have made a difference. Mm. Harris had a decent game. Najee Harris, he's put together a couple of good games, yeah. right? He wouldn't have really, well, he would have um, technically made a difference in this game, but I wouldn't have played him over Saquon Barkley. Yeah, uh, I'm. I, I'm, maybe Daryl maybe Henderson. Maybe over Henderson. Henderson yeah. would have, if he would have benched Henderson, that would have given him. Yeah, the I, edge, I think. But. I, I think Sammy's logic there is Tennessee is really good at stopping the run, although they've actually been struggling the last couple of weeks. But I can't trust any Pittsburgh offensive player <laughs> this year, so yeah. I can see that as why is also. Yeah, so it's tough. But he's going to get James Conner back, who's supposed to also be coming off of IR this week, I believe. Um, so that should be good. And then Ian did leave Deontay Johnson on the bench, which yeah, he's been he's, great he's ever been since he came well back. Too, yeah. But I think uh, Zay Flowers was, uh, you know, supposed to have a good matchup against uh, Seattle. So I think maybe, maybe one of those times trying to get a little too cute. Not trusting Pittsburgh's offense is also fair. It's Deontay Johnson's first touchdown in yeah. a couple of years. Well, you know, I'm he's gonna sure. he's gonna get the targets and stuff at least for a solid uh, floor, I would say. But yeah, I mean. Pretty much just came down to the wire. Not much these guys could have done to change the outcome, I would say, for the most part. Um, and then the other the other wild game. Drake getting his second win of the season over Becky's halftime honeybees. Drake putting up 98 points. Becky putting up 92. And if you take a look at the, the scores, Drake has three zeros in his lineup. Kendrick Bourne was hurt. He's been hurt. 
Curtis Samuel was hurt, been hurt, and Detroit's on a bye. <laughs> he also did not have a kicker until last night when somebody <laughs> secretly messaged him. A little birdie. To have him pick up a kicker, put up 11 points, and win the matchup over Becky. Now, there's a lot of luck at play here, and there's one thing that's really jumping out at me on the roster. He started Dobbs for Minnesota, mm -hmm. who did not start that game. Yeah. He it's came he, in. That's an act of God that he came in and, and played the, in that game. Yeah. The pastronaut. <laughs> yeah. It's because he had him last week when he was. For the Cardinals. <laughs> yeah. When, so he uh, leaves him in the roster. <laughs> when Stroud was on by, I believe, right? My head's ready Correct. to explode so, on that one. Yeah. It, it, it's wild. That's some. He also got that's... a big, big game from Josh Jacobs with two touchdowns, 98 rushing yards. Jonu Smith. The man that everybody hates in Atlanta because he takes away from Kyle Pitts, but he had 100 yards, He's a touchdown, five catches. Um, and you just got a feel for Becky. Um, once again, Tua and Tyreek are the driving force of her team, and if they don't do well, you live and die. she's going to struggle. I, yep. And we all expected that game to be a shootout. I mean, I thought final score was going to be 42 to 45, and... Boy, did Miami struggle against KC. Yeah. Well, I think people underestimate KC's defense this year. And when you're overseas, they, things are different, like yeah. on a different time schedule. So, I don't know. The only uh, good thing she got out of her team this week was Joe Mixon finally starting to look decent um, because the Bengals' offense is looking better and Baltimore's defense has just been, just been dominant for the most part. Um, even if she played Lamar Jackson, wouldn't have helped. Mike Evans wouldn't have helped. I mean, Mike Evans, I guess, would have, but you have to pick. Are you going to sit Chris Godwin or Tony Pollard, DeAndre Swift maybe? I don't know. It's it's hard to trust. Another bit of luck with Drake is his kicker spot was vacant all the way up through the beginning of the, of the Monday night game. Mm -hmm. And to have one of those kickers on the waiver wire that he was able to pick up and start, which ended up getting him the win. This guy, I don't know what he's doing, but he's got some luck <laughs> uh, to, to get a win this week. Uh, I feel bad for Becky. Yeah. He was uh, projected 48 points. <laughs> <laughs> Double this projections. <laughs> oh um, I, I think, I think the, the good part for Drake though, is we're going to see him this week. We're going to make him set his lineup. And I think pretty much he has a lot of players that have early bye weeks that most of his bye weeks are actually over, that he may be able to just set the rest of his lineup throughout the season, and then he doesn't have to worry about it the rest of the season. His, his role the rest of this regular season is going to be the spoiler, trying to give people losses who are yeah. on that bubble. Yeah, or we, like Jordan said, who's looking for a quarterback. We got boarding. some quarterback quarters in this league, so <laughs> I've been been struggling. As yeah. both teams, uh, Becky's team as well has two top five quarterbacks, yeah. Lamar and two. And that's what I said, though. That becomes almost a problem in this kind of league because if Lamar goes off, it's like, well, why Who would I sit play? to a – if I have Tyreek Hill, yeah. But then if Tua has a bad game, then Lamar has a good game, and you just feel bad. So, exactly. Yeah, it's tough. I don't, but I can't. I don't know to trade her because I'm not trying to give up that big of a piece to the right. team. To now, to be Lamar. fair, at this point, Drake's quarterbacks: Daniel Jones is out for the season. Justin Fields <laughs> maybe will be back in like a week. Um, we'll see. Tyson Badgins, but he's good. gonna. He might want to hold on to Josh Jobs because Justin Jefferson might not, might come back. Who knows? So. Just so weird to see Stroud sitting on his bench. Just, yeah. He's been on fire. And he was all excited about getting C.J. Stroud yeah, on his was. team. That he was the whole him mantra. Early. He drafted yeah. him early. It was the whole mantra of his team. He's sitting and he, there on his bench putting up points. <laughs> yeah. And finally, why do I feel like you keep being in that yeah, final keeps, matchup? I am constantly in the game of the week. W-E-A-K. <laughs> Ah, so Malik's last place team, which now he has confirmed he's not going to change his name because he feels like it would be bad juju. <laughs> so Malik keeping him the last place team name, uh, taking down Joe's Hollywood blockbusters, 95.62 to 92.7. Joe, I'm going to let you take this away because it did come down to the wire. Neither one of us deserve a win. It should have. We <laughs> both should have gotten losses in this game. You, you don't deserve a win by putting up 95 points. Um, I was leading, uh, most of the day 
and uh, he had C.D. Lamb going, who uh, had a big day, 28 points. That kept him close, uh, but heading in to, uh, what was it, Sunday night? Yeah, heading into Sunday yep. night, uh, I was still clinging on to a lead, and mm-hmm. Once again, this has happened to me all season long. We get into the fourth quarter. I still had a lead in the fourth quarter, and then I lose at the last minute um, by less than three points. It was just absolutely heartbreaking. Yeah. One moment that I point to, and you know, you can go crazy thinking about this, but mm-hmm. uh, the Bengals had come out for a long field goal, a 50-plus yarder. And I had picked up McPherson as a bye week fill in. So I'm thinking, oh, sweet, I'm going to get a 50 plus yard field goal because McPherson knocks those through pretty regularly. Mm-hmm. Well, the Bengals get a false start penalty. I was going to say, he actually knocked it through. Yeah. And then the penalty was called. And so it backs him up five yards. And instead of re kicking, they decide the punt. That cost me my game. That yeah. that field goal would have won the game for me. Mm-hmm. And that's how my season has been going all all year long. Yeah. Are these really close losses that happen late in the fourth quarter of Sunday night or Monday night football? It's it drives me absolutely crazy. Mahomes, another pedestrian game, uh only fifteen yeah. points. Um, who else? Uh, Ferguson, the tight end, uh, really gave me some hope for, uh, the tight end for Dallas, 22 yeah. points. Uh, he had a nice game. Uh, but look at the rest of my roster. Marquise Brown, six, uh, Bijan, who I guess was in the doghouse after his fumble. He sat nobody, on the bench. Nobody most knows. Of that game. <laughs> uh, I picked up, uh, Hunt as another bi-week fill-in. I couldn't get 10 points from him, even though he did score a, a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Um, but then let's go to the bench. Zero, 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 <laughs> zero, zero. I had yeah, nothing guys... on the bench that would have made a difference. So yeah. I played every available player I could yeah. and uh, came up with the narrow loss. I was going to say, you guys didn't have any lineup decisions really to make. Uh, Malik yeah. decided to go with George Pickens over DeAndre Hopkins, which... Sure. And no one could have seen Pickens sure, I guess. 1.9 points. Yeah, yeah. Keep He's those been... feet in bones. I know, right? <laughs> Um, yeah. Zach Moss, uh, gave way to Jonathan Taylor finally this week, uh, which my team is very happy about. Um, and Jamar Chase went out in that Sunday night game with a back injury. And so kind of got a little bit lucky that you had a chance to win, honestly, I would yeah. think, but uh, oh, I've, I fully expected to lose, but yeah, when, when you have a chance, I want to get blown out. Right. I don't want to lose by two and a half. Yeah. Points. It's like we, we, I think we said it before, like you would rather get blown out. Yeah. Then lose by like one point. I'd lose you know, sleep over that. Yeah. But going back, Malik's team for being named the last place team is quite I, loaded. I've been saying it to people all year. Every person that comes on this podcast always says like, oh, Malik's in last place. I was like, look at his team. If they ever get rolling, it's going to be a scary team I'm to go. I'm surprised he's even been losing games with the way ETN's been putting yeah. points up. Yeah. Well, it was the Bengals offense was struggling, so Jamar Chase was struggling. Uh, Buffalo's been up and down. Josh Allen, you know, can throw turnovers and stuff like that. He's Brett Favre of this generation. Uh, so, yeah, it's just it just hasn't worked out for his team for some reason. But uh, here he comes. It's going to be up. scary. Yeah, moving up. <laughs> the, only That's why solace, I said. the only solace I can take in this is we're both four and five. I'm mm-hmm. in seventh. Yeah. He's in sixth. If I can get a couple wins out of the rest of the season, you know, we've been saying this, as long as you stay in that top eight, mm-hmm. the playoffs begin a whole new season. Yeah, exactly. And for me, get in. for me, I like when Malik keeps winning because I'm terrified that I would have to play him in the playoffs. If yeah. he stayed in that eighth place and I'd have to play him, I Top don't know. seed versus bottom seed. I wouldn't yeah. feel very good because he's not a bottom seed. <laughs> Um, All right, let's move to the waiver wire real quick. Name up a couple names. Uh, Quarterbacks are plentiful, as always. So, Jordan, you should be able to find somebody, if not the guys that you want. They're not very good. No, they're not great, (laughs) but they're they're passable. Sam Howell, Russell Wilson, Baker Mayfield, all pretty solid options. Um, If you're looking for a running back, Gus Edwards is still there. Wow, that surprises me. He's just a guy. It's one of the positions I do not need. Yeah, I don't need any positions. Uh, like you said, Taysom Hill is down there if you're looking for a, a fill-in tight end or something. Um, B. 
because guys like, uh, who was it? Travis Kelsey will be on by this week. Mm -hmm. Um, Dallas Goddard's hurt, so he won't matter. Um, but you'll, I guess you'll still have to replace him. So get Dallas Goddard owner. Um, what's the other big name team? Uh, Miami's off this week, right? Yeah. So nobody's care. Nobody cares about Drew Smythe. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then is it the Patriots? Hunter Henry? Mm-hmm. Is, is he there? Yeah, I think he was. So, yeah. Let me look. Um, so you got a couple options. And then wide receiver. Yep, Hunter Henry is there. Wide receiver is maybe the one position that's kind of empty, I would say. You got Rashid Shahid, uh, Tutu Atwell's on bye. Romeo Dobbs, maybe he could be a good fill-in because Christian Watson is a little banged up. K.J. Osborne, sure. Mm, yeah, it, it gets ugly pretty fast but uh there's some options out there if you need uh so let's just look forward to week 10 as i said it's a big coming down to the wire so it's getting more and more important for these matchups um i'm playing ian's team right now i'm projected 116 to 102 but i believe he still has yeah he has a kicker that he has to replace um so his lineup's not completely full so the kicker will probably give him another seven points or so so it should be a close matchup um, in projections. Malik's last place team is going to take on uh, Becky's halftime honeybees. Right now, Malik is also projected to win that matchup, and it looks like Becky doesn't have... She's not missing anybody. She's already replaced Tua and Tyreek, so this is a good spot for Malik to take over Becky even more and uh, separate himself from the bottom teams, which is, again, terrifying. And then, what's the next matchup that I show? Tracy's projected to only score 82 points. She must have Drake's some team. buys. Yeah, she has Raheem Mostert on buy. Also has Harrison Bucker. So, she's going to have to pick up a kicker. And does she have another running back? Maybe David Montgomery. But if David Montgomery doesn't come back, she's going to have to pick somebody up, which, yeah. which could be tricky. At the moment, she is benching Devontae Adams. <laughs> Wow, benching Adams. Maybe, you know, the frustration has has fully set in. Wow. Um, so we'll have to wait and see there. Uh, like we said, Drake's team, we're going to try to get him to set his lineup at least this week so that he doesn't have to worry about it moving forward. He doesn't have any buys this week, so he should be okay um, at full strength. And then, ooh, Jordan, mm-hmm. you're taking on Sammy. His told team's out. Yeah, which is a great <laughs> opportunity for you to get Wait, off that, see this. that ninth place team. <laughs> he has the entire Eagles yeah, offense. Yeah, because he rides with the Eagles. Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard are all out. He has an empty slot right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh. He's got to replace his kicker because he's got Miami's kicker. Like I said, he's going to get James Conner back. But he's playing Geno Smith, who had like one point last week. Uh, so Seattle's not looking that great. Yeah. Um, and you are still looking for your quarterback, like you talked about. I have waivers put in. Possibly a tight end. I already did. And then the rest of your team, I, I keep saying your your team should be strong. It's just they haven't been living up to their I talent. No, I don't have a quarterback. <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying, like, they haven't always been providing, like last week with Ken Walker and stuff like that. So. Putting up a point. Yeah. I wonder which one of us, uh, do we do waivers by point totals on the season? Uh, Yes. I wonder where we are so. in points because uh, I might I might pick up that Howl guy just to keep on my bench. <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't do that. In a 10-team league to do a spite thing like that <laughs> usually backfires, I'll tell you that much. Well, I like Drake's strategy I'll pick up of someone. having four quarterbacks. Yeah, everybody load up. Okay, well, I'm going to drop all my players and pick up all the quarterbacks so you guys don't have any quarterbacks. Um, yeah, that's that would be wild. Is um, Kyler Murray actually playing? He's supposed to. He's on track to right now. I thought he was supposed to come back this week. They too, took, but yeah, they they talked about it. But now they officially took him off IR. Oh, okay. So he's not on IR anymore, and now he's expected to play this week. But it, who knows? So that's why I'm saying I might have to drop Tank Dell, um, because I don't really want to drop Kyler because he's a a good bye week fill in for me potentially. Um, and then the final matchup is Marie the Dark Knight Rises taking on Joe's Hollywood Blockbusters. The uh, Chiefs bye week may be a blessing in disguise because I've been <laughs> riding Mahomes all season long and he's constantly disappointing me. So now I am forced to start Purdy yep. over Mahomes. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. I, I know for a fact that Purdy will outscore Mahomes this week. Mm-hmm. Um, but is this the change that maybe I leave 
Purdy in. We'll see. If he if he gets me some decent points this week, I might stick with him the rest of the season because Mahomes just disappoints. Uh, I get Gibbs back this week I'm excited about um, because they said even if Montgomery comes back, there's a place for Gibbs. So <laughs> That's what they said before. Yeah, think Dang. about both backs being fresh you know montgomery gets a yeah. uh, gets a uh you know a drive and then gibbs gets a drive I'm, as a lions fan i've been thinking about it all season and i haven't seen it all season so <laughs> as it, a lions fan it's a wait and see i like the carries that jameer gibbs is getting as a fantasy owner i would be disappointed yeah. as a fan let's keep some tread on the tires yeah I, I would like to see him keep getting the ball and use David Montgomery maybe closer to the goal line like, yeah. like we did last year with Jamal Williams a little bit, but if that's what they're going to do. They like David Montgomery too much. As uh, we should. So Marie's mm-hmm. going to have to figure out a tight end situation. Uh, Travis Kelsey's on by. She has Ty- Tyler Higby, who's also on by. Uh, so she'll have to make a replacement there. Um, but I think there's a couple tight ends that I can think of off the top of my head that she could maybe go for. Um, but the close, it's a close projection. So, I mean, she does have the empty roster spot right now until she fills her tight end position, but I am favored to win right now. So we'll yeah, see. until she puts up a couple points on the board, but, uh, <laughs> Oh, is, uh, Debo Samuel supposed to be back? They changed his status, uh, from out to questionable, I believe, mm-hmm. but I just don't know if I trust him just yet. If, if they yeah. completely remove the questionable status, I might think about trying to get him into my roster, but mm-hmm. as long as there's a big red Q by his name, he's sitting on my bench. Yeah. And yeah, I'm it, just about done with Pierce, too, I was going to say, Debo might be a good, might be fun to have the the hookup for. Yeah. But uh, then you have to bench Jacoby Myers or, Mar- or Marquise Brown. That's kind of tough if Kyler Murray is coming back, and uh, Jacoby yeah. Myers up against the Jets is a tough matchup. So some yeah. roster decisions there. But um, yeah, that's uh, that's it. Week ten coming up, and uh, here I'll I'll pull up the standings really quick. So like I said, I'm I'm outright first right now, seven and two. Then we have the Dak Knight rises and Tracy's top notch team at six and three. Then we have a slew of people. We have Sammy and Ian at five and four, Malik, Joe at four and five, and then Becky and Jordan at three and six. Uh, so a lot of movement still to be had. Drake is al- alive, wildly enough. If he can string off a couple wins here, uh, those bottom teams, you guys got to be a-, a little bit nervous about it. But, yeah, I, I can't afford like consecutive losses. Even if I alternate win loss win loss, that probably will keep me in the top eight. But if I if I can't get a win over the next week or so, I'm in trouble. Yeah, so it should be fun. Uh, Jordan, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for having me. We enjoy having a guest. I'll go back to the cameras so that we can actually see each other. Jordan, uh, you do have more season points than I, so you oh, get howl. Okay. <laughs> who, who do you want? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, like always, everybody, set your lineups. Um, hit the waiver wire if you need to. It's another crazy bye week with uh, not a lot of teams, but a lot of big-name teams. So uh, good luck, everybody, and we'll uh, see you as week 10 ends and we go into week 11 next week.